Sorry. Well, hello and welcome to Flipping Through the Internet's a number one Mad Magazine news review and interview channel. And today, I thought I could uh, take a drink of water before the credits finished rolling. Why? I don't know. I'm recording this. I could have waited. Today, we're going to be talking about Dave Berg's first appearance in Mad Magazine. If you're new to first appearances, it is where I choose an artist or a writer, so far only artists or artists slash writers, and we look at their very first appearance in Mad Magazine, um, significant appearances after that, and then their final appearance in Mad. And uh, it's a pretty fun thing to do, especially to see how artists grow and change over time. But before we do that, I want to say, please hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below, especially, listen, this is Dave Berg we're talking about. There's a lot of rabid Berg fans. We call them Bergens. That's what we call them. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have a specific um, you know, memory about Dave Berg, thoughts on Dave Berg. I don't know. I'm not your supervisor. But uh, that is the best way that you can support me. If you want to support me in another way, check out the link below, patreon.com slash flipping through. That is where you can give me money. Why would you do that? Well, here's something. You value what I do. And you want to just show it in uh, in a small way. You will also get a pair uh, or a set of stickers. The beautiful. Let's switch to the. Oh, great. That doesn't even work. Ah, oh, geez. What's wrong with me? Why am I such an utter disgrace? Um, what was I saying? Um, you get these beautiful stickers. Uh, the flipping through channel logo. Potter's EB system awaits and measurements. And Max Corn was here. Those people who do support me are Megan McInerney, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Ed Meisinger, Doug Guilford, Rob Wilson, Rod Mead, Sperry, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ori, and Kyle Bridget. I was about to say, hey guys, but no, there's a lady there now too. Hey folks, thank you so much for the support and I hope that I can keep on earning it. With that, let's get right into it. Um, my opinion on Dave Berg is, uh, you know, it comes up. In casual conversation, comes up in comments, comes up in um, backroom dealings. Uh, it's somewhat controversial. I'm not a big fan of the lighter side of. I think it, the humor is corny. Um, the art sort of bothers me at times. But um, you know what? I deal with it and I just sort of skip over it. Um, that's, that's the point in life that I'm at now. But I think people mistake my dislike for the lighter side of, as dislike of Dave Berg or disrespect of Dave Berg. I hold Dave Berg in the highest regards as a mad contributor, and I especially like certain elements of his artwork. So this one's especially exciting for me because I get to point out um, somebody who's, he's mo what he's most well for, I despise, and what he's not that well known for, I absolutely love and I get to show off things about it that I absolutely love. Now, let me um, get all of my ducks in a row. We're going to go all the way back, way, way back in time to Mad Magazine number 34. And we get um, Dave Berg's very first appearance in Mad Magazine. Let's switch over to the browser. Oh, good. At least this is working as intended. Um, so here we have shooting the Grand Rapids department. Today, people are living modern. They're driving modern cars like Flight Sweep, smoking modern cigarettes like L&M, running up modern debts like Installment Plan, and ending up with modern illnesses like Flap the Lower Lip. Here's one craze that's a major contributor to today's mad mode of living. Modern Furniture presented by Dave Berg. If you're looking at this... If you're looking at this artwork and you're thinking, all right, when am I going to see uh, Dave Berg's contribution to it? You're looking at it. Yes, this beautiful, beautiful artwork belongs to Dave Berg. This artwork that's like chock full of details of, I mean, like look at how, look at the movements of this character. Look at the posture. Oh, I absolutely love it. Look at the, the design of this. Perspective's a little goofy, I think, but I think Dave Berg just sort of sucks at perspective, but that's okay. I love it. I'm charmed by it 
in this instance. Um, so here, let's look at one of these because one of the things that I'm critical of Dave Berg about the lighter side of is his writing. Um, now we get to see him, you know, as a writer artist, you get to strike that perfect balance of where the joke is carried, if it's in the uh, um, image or if it's in the, the text of it. Um, modern furniture eliminates ugly extensions like drawer pulls. So as not to break up the smooth, sleek lines. Here you see of chest of drawers with drawer pulls, cleverly concealed. All right, now, like, this is what I'm noticing about this is one, we already see what the punchline is, but what's cool about it is we get the whole setup, and the setup is really well done, especially the way it's written with the ellipses and his uh, filler words that he uses. Here you see a chest of drawers with drawer pulls cleverly concealed. The drawer pulls are cleverly concealed underneath these, er, on the other side of these, er, they're here someplace. And he starts banging away at, ah, oh, yes, here we are. See what I mean about not breaking up those smooth, sleek lines? I love that. I absolutely love that. It's a really good balance, even though you you see the punchline almost immediately. Um, let's go on to the next page. I did choose to do... Um, the digital versions of all of these because of the fact that um, I'm able to zoom in so much more more better than I am with my um, my camera up top there. And so you can see like he does this really cool thing um, with this plant here. <laughs> and I know it's like it's kind of silly to to point out this, but he has like the you have the plant here and then you have in the, in the foreground, the leaves, and then you have background leaves that are shaded black, and then you have the shadow of the plant itself. It's like, there's so much care. Look at the, the way he drew um, the chrome of this um, little tea kettle or coffee pot, whatever the heck it is, or even the way he did the shadow of the slat, the slats on this bench. It's just, there was so much effort put into it. Oh, look at my head is lined up. Uh, there's so much effort put into it, and I just, I, I absolutely love it, and I, I love this too, like the, um, that's the motion of that, they, how he captures it is just so fantastic, the expression of that guy as he busts his ass on the floor, um, it is absolutely lovely, and here we have the sectional sofa, which cleverly answers the old problem of decorating that corner. It's comfortable too. If you can cleverly answer the problem of how to stretch on around the decorated corner. I love that. I just absolutely love this. Uh, it is such a fun, such a fun gag. Let's see. Do we have one more page of that? And what? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my God. If you were, if you were watching um, the live stream that I did with Kyle Bridget recently... You'll know how I feel about uh, the old mad tradition of suicide humor. Uh, and my God, look at this. Like, I mean, let's read it. Let's, uh, for the finicky woman who hates to have her floor scuffed, modern hanging furniture is the answer. Problem is solved by hanging those chairs, cabinets, lamps, and other floor scuffers from the ceiling. <laughs> it's just awesome. I love this. For people who are limited for space and want to make one room into two, modern furniture has the answer, the efficient and practical room divider, which efficiently and practically divides your room into two. I do. I love these patterns that he uses. Um, yeah, this is, if what a debut. That's what I have to say about this. This is possibly... Out of, I think of all of the um, first appearance videos that I've done, probably the strongest debut. I know like maybe Sergio Aragones, I did his first appearances or the, the first appearances of like Spy versus Spy. Same thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is much funnier than that first one. I mean, the first Spy versus Spy is fun and it's awesome and it's historic, but I should point this way. Golly, that's great. So a very strong debut about modern furniture by Dave Berg. So we're going to jump ahead, um, I don't know, about a year, and a, a year and a half, 30, 
34, issue 34 to issue 45. Um, and this is about planned obsolescence. Mirage in the garage department. The United States of America is the only country in the world that produces a new model car every year. So with this fact in mind, Matt prepared the following article, which asks, who needs it? Who needs it? Your failure, your success. Mainly, you've succeeded in going back into debt for $5,000, falling for planned obsolescence. If you know what, in case you don't know, planned obsolescence is uh, when companies design a product to not last or I mean that's like the most vicious form of it that's like the shadiest form is like that it's designed to not last for very long but the other thing is is that they create new models thereby making the old models obsolete um, and it's planned hence planned obsolescence um, now this is one where I feel like uh, this is his second appearance and we have no this isn't his this isn't his second appearance i'm sorry that was that was an incorrect statement that i made um i pulled this one because this is actually an issue that i own um many of these others because they're under number 100 that's like where the largest gaps in my collection are so this is just one that i specifically own um now what i notice about this, this is like about a year and a half later you start to get those hints of Dave Berg's more signature style. Um, I mean, I thought that that first one about modern furniture, expertly done, it's beautiful, but it's not Bergian, all right? Now, what I see is my opinion about what Bergian illustrations are, have these sort of, um, I, I don't know how to, they're almost like demented faces. They. Uh, Eyebrows are often furrowed. The mouth is like sneering oftentimes. Um, here we have this guy with his mouth agape and his eyebrows furrowed right there. You have this child right here making some sneering face to this pitiful girl right beside him. Um, that's where I think his, his style is starting to peek through a little bit more. Um, but again, you have this, dare I say, effort put in um, that seems lost later on. Um, so here we have, I, I'm not going to, this is actually the way it's laid out is it, it makes reading on line almost impossible to do. So uh, I'm not going to be reading any of these gags, just admiring this artwork. And again, look at, you have this like this biker gang hanging out in the back seat. You have, um, I don't even know what this is. Oh yeah, chrome. Cars becoming more and more chrome covered. Um, and here we have the uh, the windows eventually becoming a full fishbowl. Um, but it's just, there's a level of creativity in this um, and a level of effort because of that that is just fantastic. And it's really just so much fun to look at and explore visually, um, especially you know when it's on two pages more so. Um, is that the last? Oh yeah, and then tattooing. That's not, this is a George Woodbridge. So I'm not interested. All right, now we're gonna go on a tear in the 60s, and I mean the number 60s, I don't know what year it is. But this is Mad number 63. Now I pulled this because um, a mad peek behind the scenes is a very common mad um, piece article. How should I refer to it? But it's a very common one and many people have done it. Um, modern artists, like, I mean, they've been doing a mad peek behind the scenes up into the modern era. But I know, you know, I think like Paul Coker did one. I know Sergio Aragones has done one. He did like mad peek behind Comic-Con. Um, I think Paul Coker did Mad Peak behind um, like the post office or something. But this is a thing that gets given out to different artists, um, I guess, based on <laughs> when they need work done. Um, so this is a Mad Peak behind the scenes. And this one is just sort of, um, there's not one specific theme. It just introduces each one. So this is like, um, 
at the main office of the Pepsi-Cola company. And they have Coca-Cola. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's what, you know, that's what people say when something isn't funny. Oh, that's funny. Uh, here we have the Las Vegas parking lot. Yeah, he's paying out. I was very um, interested to see this, especially compared to the one in 43. You see there is like a really big departure. And I mean, if you're looking at it the way I am right now and showing these, it's a dramatic change. And it's, a, I would say, pretty jarring because this does seem almost like the simplicity, the simplicity of the lines, um, the the consistency of the lines looks something like Paul Coker would do. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. It's stylized. It's fun. You have, again, like these people in these like very, you know, like caught in these moments of laughter or, of you know, lounging and having a cigarette at your wine colony or like this today's motion picture censorship bureau. Um, yeah, that, I guess the MPAA was very controversial in its day. I don't know. Uh, and so here, like, this is, I guess, I don't know, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but these faces, especially with the women, uh, he does have a very specific way of drawing women with the um, kind of uh, pointed eyes um, and the these types of smiles with, like, very pronounced lips. Uh yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's fun. I enjoy this artwork quite a bit. Here, I should zoom out a little bit more. Uh, here we have the payroll office at Mosler Safe Company. Basically, what this is is it's a series of ironies. That's what this is. Um, the United States Weather Bureau always sticking his thumb out. Uh, you know, the Arpeggi Perfume Factory. They're using Airwick. You know, it's the same joke over and over again. But I really liked the style of this. Um, but you have mediocre writing, I think is fair to say. Um, now, moving on to another very well-known um, feature. One that later became, I would say, owned by another artist, Sergio Aragones. And this is A Mad Look At... the beach <laughs> i guess you could have uh been able to tell that now um yeah if you are unfamiliar um you're certainly familiar with a mad look at and you're familiar that sergio aragones owns it right like if you say a mad look at you you're assuming that that would be the artist and writer behind it but when it first happened artist filled in it was just like this is something we do um it would be written, and then I guess they would send it out to people. Or maybe the individual artist would write it and then do it. But I know um, several artists have done this. Um, and to me, this is like the precursor to the lighter side of it. It has a lighter side of feel. Um, now, here we have some beautiful artwork. It is, sticking with that previous one from number 63, it is more simplified artwork but it is more i don't know complex would it, would that be fair to say i know there's artists that watch this now um, there's more details put into it there's more things that are rendered in this it feels like um before i go into like the specific gags i did want to admire this right up top so we have like all of the different types of people you would see at the beach you have the string bean here i don't know drying his hands you have a little punk kid you know, you have the big old slob asleep on it. You have just like some random ladies. You have the, um, you know, Flex Mentallo or um, who's he? Who's Flex Mentallo based on? Charles Atlas. You have the Charles Atlas figure, you know, and the beautiful Speedo. You have uh, this creep uh, taking pictures with his Rolla Flex. Uh, you got this late. You got this babe. This. Uh, big Bertha lady. Um, and it's just like, this is so much fun to look at. And it's fun to see how they're interacting with each other. The scuba guy, the guy dropping ice cream. And then this ape. I absolutely love this ape right here. Um, 
but yeah, so uh, here, let's, are any of these, okay, here we go. This one is, I think, only on this page. So here we have the mom, and again, you have these, um, I guess the eyes aren't exactly like I had mentioned before, but you have like the very pronounced lips, you have these furrowed eyebrows, like I mentioned, um, and sort of like these, kind of a demented face this woman has. She's trying to feed this kid. No wonder he won't eat from her. Uh, she's like, I don't know, yogurt or something? Carrot? No, no. Sandwich? They just love that um, that transformation into this rage right here. This rage face is just beautiful. And he starts seeing the sand and the horror on her face is, I don't know, it's lovely. And then like little details like this, like her backbone and then like the, I don't know, what are those called? Shoulder blades? Um, it's wonderful. Now this is, this is what I would call, um, very, very similar. And I, I'm almost certain I've seen this gag in a, um, a lighter side of, but this, the humor felt very lighter side of E. Um, so here we have the couple, they go to the lockers. He's waiting like a gentleman. What? The door gets blown open. Oh, you saw my dress slip. Oh, screech. Let's see what happens slams the door he's like oh golly i just blew it he opens up and she's wearing even she's more scantily clad than when she was in her slip very lighter side of uh, but i do enjoy this style even though it is much more simple than what he was producing in that first appearance or that second or that uh in like issue number what, should, what am i trying to say 45 that second example the first and second example the illustrations are much more simplistic, but I think that that is, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to see. Uh, and I quite enjoy like, all right. So this is just, it's kind of disturbing, but it's uh, amusing too. So like, I don't know, these guys are like chasing this woman down and she hides, she just hides behind a big fat guy. Uh, and he's just, I don't know. I love that. It's just perfect. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about it is like the way he captures motion in these. And that's something that I feel like he loses later on. Um, here we have, look at that. Yeah, and then she goes and uh, uses the sun lamp at home. Uh, all right, now we're gonna hop on to, I think I'm done with this segment. The next segment is that very first appearance of the lighter side of. Um, and this is not what I, um, this is not one that I have a problem with. Um, it is really the ones later on in his life that I have a problem with. So this is the lighter side of TV. Television has only been in general use for about 15 years, and yet it has completely changed our way of life. The TV set has brought the world into our living rooms as if we didn't have enough troubles already. It has wised up our young people behind their years, beyond their years, killed the ancient art of conversation, and reduced the pastime of reading to the pages of TV Guide. We at MAD have always found television a vulnerable target for our kidding, but somehow we've limited our fun to the idiotic things that appear on the TV screen, and we've ignored the idiotic things that face the TV screen, mainly the TV viewers, some of whom can be more ridiculous than all the ridiculous TV programs and TV commercials combined. To them, Matt dedicates the following article, which offers the lighter side of TV. What a great introduction. Uh, and I don't know how long this went on, the introductions for the lighter side of. Obviously, as time went on, he would have themes, the lighter side of this or that. But then he would also just do the lighter side of, and it would be a smorgasbord with all types of um, different topics. It would be like religion, romance. Those are the only two topics I know. So um, this is, again, like more of a, a cartoonish style. Right? We've got, well, I shouldn't say more of a cartoonish style. That's not the right way to phrase it. But it's a, a, a simpler style, which makes sense, especially you know, you get paid by the page. The faster that you can complete a page, the more your time, the more money your time is worth, right? So um, I get that. I understand that. And that isn't a complaint of mine. Um, there's lots of artists that I enjoy that have very, very simple styles. But here we go. So we have um, 
you know, this guy's screwing himself. He was bing bong, bing bong. He hop. Come on. There we go. He hops out. He runs down. Bing bong, bing. Oh, it's just on the television. Yeah. Yeah, it's maybe that was funny. <laughs> maybe that was funny back when this came out. Uh, you know, it's uh, I'm going to be nice to this, right? It's um, here we have uh, this guy. Oh, look, he's rushing out. His old lady's pointing. I love like this right here. I want to zoom in on this because I am actually I'm really pleased with this panel. I mean, it's just um, I don't know the way that she's facing. You can kind of see she's leaning slightly as he's just pointing to the clock. He's scampering out to get the coffee. Look at he skids. You don't even need like um, those like little speed marks to show. Like he captures that movement so well. This right here, the floppy arm as he's putting his coat on and holding his briefcase with his teeth. And then, <laughs> and then he just gets so sucked in that he's watching, uh, you know, whatever channel or whatever show that those kids are watching. It's, I mean, this is, um, I mean, it's not like laugh out loud funny, but it's funny. That's very funny. And I, I, I quite enjoy that. Here we have the people coming, Happy New Year. Oh, look at how... Here we are, the woman with no nose, the big, uh, or she, this one has no nose also, or that might actually just be, oops, it looks as though she has no nose. Uh, I mean, that goes back a while to like the issue number something or other, 63. Um, the mouth and the eyes, I don't know why I'm fixated on that stuff, um, but I do find it interesting the way he draws women. Uh, here we have the the late late show, or the late show, the late late show, turns off. For those of you young bucks in the audience, be aware. Uh, television used to turn off, and they they would just stop broadcasting things. There was no twenty four hours of television. They would just stop, and uh, it would be done. It's like okay, no more TV for now. Um, and then the early early show, and he pops awake. Um, you know, I think like a lot of this is because of the time that has passed, it's jokes that we've heard already. So I don't want to be too harsh a judge on this, um, on the humor of this part, uh, just because, I don't know, that'd be an easy one to, it wouldn't be easy. It would be unfair is what I'm trying to say. Now this, um, I've actually read this one before, and this one I absolutely adore um, because it is, it's so whimsical. It's so whimsical. So here we have this lady. She's watching some television program. You can notice like the vacuum is like snagged on something. <laughs> and then we see it start, it's sucking up the entire rug, which in turn is like causing the table and chairs to be toppled. But <laughs> like the drapery is getting pulled down. It's shaking the pictures off of the wall. Look at all of this. Look at just all of that detail that he, put into this it's outstanding i mean it's really something else i love it and so here we have it's all sucked up and now just the armchair is what's left and that's getting schmucked up too but oh wait no that's not all that's left and it's just like it's so silly and whimsical um i love it i absolutely love it this was a very very funny one um yeah so this is um you know, this is like the first 30 something issues of Dave Berg's work. And I am a huge fan of it. I absolutely love this stuff. Um, now let's jump ahead. Let's jump ahead. This is uh, issue 265. And this is actually, um, I think I've, I think I've shown this before. I could be incorrect. But to me, now, this is an untrained eye, of course. I'm not, I don't have an artist's eye. I don't have the artist's vocabulary. So I'm doing my best to describe what I see and what I dislike about this. So forgive me if I misuse terms. Um, a few things, like, um, I guess I shouldn't criticize the perspective because the very first one I was talking about how I like it. But it feels different. It feels stiff it feels um i mean it's detailed right he he's drawn almost an entire living room and we have the woman walking through and there's a print on her dress and we have this guy here and look at 
the amount of detail that's been put into him. But I don't like it. <laughs> I guess that's it. I guess it all comes down to personal taste. Um, I don't even know if there's like a, um, a, a, a technical critique that I could give that would be legitimate because like I said, the thing about perspective, I think that doesn't really matter. And on the, his first appearance, perspective is a little wonky, but I liked it. I don't know. Um, you know, here's, here we have Mr. Gaines. I want to talk to you about women's rights. Oh, please not again, Miss Griffiths. I thought we settled this issue last time. Not really. This time I'm demanding equal pay for equal work. If you really want that, I'll have to comply with your demand. Mr. Cruel does the same job you do, and he's been with us about the same amount of time. Starting next week, I'm cutting your salary down to his level. Uh, now, but officer, it's not my fault. He stepped right in front of my car. That may be true, miss, but after all, it is his backyard. I don't know. This is rough. What am, I, what am I doing running in a marathon? Who started these stupid things? Actually, it all started in ancient Greece when a soldier ran 26 miles to deliver a message. It's a hell of a lot easier when there's an army with pointy spears running behind you. I mean, that's not even the funny part of the story. The funny part of the story is that he died at the end of it, right? He ran to marathon and then he died. And now people do that for fun. That's the funny part, Dave Berg. Like, how do you not know that second part of the story? Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to just uh, turn this into rag on Dave Berg. But this is the part of it that I don't know. This is that the the time period of the lighter side of, and the time period of Dave Berg's work that I am the least fond of. That's what I'll say. I'll put it charitably. Um, now here we have. Man number two, 423. And this is da Dave Berg's last appearance. So, um, you know, I think he drew he drew this, he wrote it, um, and then it was scanned in, and we had people, um, Digital Chameleon colored it. Now, I think, um, I spoke with Kyle Bridget about this with other artists. I think that the coloring process for some artists doesn't work, right? Dave Berg's artwork works in black and white. That's how he did his artwork. That's how it looks best. And so I think that, you know, it, yeah, it just does not work very well to have his stuff colored. There's, I think uh, there's details in all of this that would have been lost. And I mean, if you're, if you look at this and compare what he's done and the details, I think like he still, he still has it, right? This isn't bad artwork. This is the artwork of an older man. And I, I do always want to be respectful of the artist's age because we all, we all will age and we'll all lose the ability to create art as we see it or as we imagine being able to create it. But, you know, you look at this and it's still his. It's still recognizable as Dave Berg's artwork. So I think that at this point um, in his, you know, stage of life, the artwork that he is making is still, it's still quite good. It's like, you can't really be like, oh, the perspective right here at this restaurant is way off. You know, like, what is this guy, eight foot tall? And she's like five foot tall. Well, no, his perspective has always been off. So, you know, it's just, uh, that's his style. But, you know, he's doing everything you would expect him to do exactly how you would expect him to do it. And yeah, I don't know. I think that maybe the lack of details might be, due to the scanning and coloring of it rather than Dave Berg. That's my assumption. So this is, I actually really like seeing this because it's great to see an artist have their last contribution to Mad Magazine be so strong or as, as strong as possible. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I do want to talk about one last thing because this is his last appearance, but it's not the last time Dave Berg's artwork appeared in Mad Magazine. And I want to talk right now about the um, what I think is probably one of the worst editorial choices Mad has made. Um, now, of course, 
I, uh, as the number one Mad Magazine news review and interview channel, I have uh, talked plenty of trash about Dave Berg and made my opinion known. Um, not always in the most respectful way, but in my heart, I do respect the guy and I, I appreciate his contribution to Mad Magazine um, because his contribution was so great. It's a fact that people like, you know, the, the lighter side of is one of the most memorable parts of the magazine for some people. It's their favorite part. And if it's your favorite part, I respect that. Um, but even with my, you know, lack of, I don't know, uh, appreciation for Dave Berg's, Dave Berg's writing and artwork, I thought that the following was a really crummy thing to do. And that is doing the darker side of the, oh, the darker side of the lighter side. Um, and so it says here, we tamper with classic Dave Berg strips, even though nobody asked us to, especially not Dave. Um, part of me does hope that they talk to Dave about it, but also like, I mean, okay, here's the thing. What they did is they took an original Dave Berg strip and then they, uh, ruined it. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me give you an example. All right. So here we have, uh, this one with this lady calling on the telephone and she says, I resent you. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. She's receiving a phone call. I resent you saying that about me, Sandy. I did not forget your birthday. As a matter of fact, at this very minute, I'm here at Louie's with a couple of my friends celebrating it. Funny. I, I, I do like that. I actually, I think that that's quite funny. Um, let's see how they rewrote it. We had one date and you forgot all about me. Forgot about you. What are you talking about? I was just telling all the guys what a great screw you are. Anyway. Uh, should I mean, should I read on? Do, does, does anybody want more of that? Um, yeah, I just think that it's... Um, it's... It was, it's a bizarre choice and it went on for much longer than you might expect it to have gone on. Um, it's been a perfectly wonderful evening, Michael, but I think you'd better take me home now. I feel the effect of my Prozac medication wearing off. Again, I, I think that's funny. They've chosen like, they've chosen strong ones to ruin. They didn't even take like bad ones and say like, let's improve the shit. Um, like that's a that's a good one. It's been a lovely night. Dinner was marvelous, and I really enjoyed your company. But I think you should take me home. I'm just too tired to wait for your Viagra to kick in. Um. Uh, yeah. Like what? I I personally I do not understand the the choice to do that. Um. And I, I never will. <laughs> I think it's so bizarre that they would do that to Dave Berg, especially when he left, you know, he left. They did a, a great send off. They had a little logo for him and uh, he, he created artwork and wrote some things for it and they published it. That should have been the final appearance of his artwork, not some bastardization of his life's work. I mean, I know I've been disrespectful to Dave Berg, but I didn't work with him. All right. Anyway, guys, this has been first appearances, probably one of the longest first appearances that I've done in a while. I hope you enjoy it. If you like these videos, please hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you want to support me in another way, patreon.com slash flipping through. Thank you so much for watching. Toodaloo.